Let's take a look at this video. Impact. Black people are only 13% of the population, yet they commit 55% of the murders. Why? Because black people tend to be in lower economic statuses. So you think that poverty equals crime? It's um, highly correlated. A lot uh, of studies this is where we that. disagree. What an insult to the working poor so in this country. So why do you think black people commit more crime, Well, first Charlie of all, Kirk? what percentage of blacks have a father around when they're raised? I'm not sure. 25%. 75% of black youth are raised without a father in the home. 75%. It is the most predictable way to end up in prison, end up as a murderer or a criminal. And it's not a racism problem. problem. It's not a white supremacy problem. It's a fact that black fathers impregnate women and they don't stay around with the women and that why? they have impregnated. Is that a bigger problem or not a bigger problem than whiteness, white privilege, or white supremacy? How they can should you all be addressed and they're all related. Oh, this is not about systemic racism. Like, stop impregnating your women and abandoning them? Um, well, the way to incentivize not impregnating women and abandoning them is increasing access to health care, into housing. So we have spent $30 trillion on the social welfare system since 1965. So the more money we've spent on black America, the less fathers we have because black women divorced black men and married the government. The government. By the way, I listen, the, 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 I may disagree with... A lot of things that Charlie Kirk had said right there. I mean, I interviewed the guy. I interviewed the yeah, guy, and, yeah. and I've, I've interviewed him twice. And he'll he'll say things that really will poke a, a lot of folks. Uh, and this is one of them. Um, for me, being a single father, I'm, a, I'm I'm it's just a personal experience. I'm not talking about some survey or some poll or some some research study. I'm talking about me. As soon as I walked into the court system, as soon as I walked, in, I had two. I, I, listen, guys, please don't judge me, but I'm just sharing with my example of what not to follow. I've got two baby mamas. Okay. I've had three kids with two different women. And every time I walked into court, I was already blackballed and deadbeat dead. Because you had two baby mamas. That's right. Yeah. Oh, blackballed. And then they come to realize that I had custody of them, that I was raising them. They're in my school system. They're, they're, they're in my uh, residential custody. And so when, when you're looking at the policies that are written to incentivize women to divorce, and necessarily uh, black men and pregnant women and, and, and leaving them, there, by the way, it's black, white, brown, everything. Men can do that. And that's why you get a text message the way you, you, you get. Yeah. Anybody can abandon somebody they get pregnant because they're scared. They don't want to step up to responsibility or they're not a man. They're a boy. By the way, ladies, if that's the situation you find yourself in, you hooked up with a boy. You didn't hook up with a man. Because a man takes responsibility of all of his actions. And by the way, I'm saying this from the guy that was a boy for many, many years of my life until I figured this. I was in my 30s, 35, 38 years old before I figured this stuff out. And so when, you, when you're looking at the scenario of fatherless homes and situations like this, and I see, and by the way, I see that now as adults. We do workshops twice a week, financial workshops twice a week, multiple cities across the country. I can't tell you how many times you see people there that work hard, they're doing things, not financially set up, fi finances are a mess. They're set behind, no savings, no investments, high student loan debt, high credit card debt, high personal loan debt, mortgage debt, but nothing to show for but everything to owe for. But this is the impact of what's going on. And that's, and that's why one of the greatest policies I'm looking to vote for this year is a policymaker, whether it be the red side or the blue side, whether it be Biden or Trump, is I want to make sure that whatever policy is created allows me as a man to create economic empowerment to make sure I can make my bread, I can be a provider, I can be a protector, because if I could do those two things, I feel great as a man, and my children are not dependent upon government, they're dependent upon me, and that's how I feel great as a man. Comment. Okay, loading and uploading. So he just said, wait, where's it? He just said that the only thing that defines a man is making money and providing. So if he's, if, there's a, if there's men out there who aren't doing that, but yet still be a nurturing father, but yet they're barely making ends meet, does that mean that they're not man enough to, to exist in this world? You know, listen, uh, the primary function of a man, sure, you can be nurturing, yeah. but you also got to be leading. You know, if, if you're trying to tell your kids to go out and live their dreams and you're not living yours and then you have no credibility, the kids aren't listening to you, yeah. your wife ain't listening to you, your family members ain't listening to you, and, and by, by, you don't got to be a millionaire. It's great to, to make a hundred thousand or make, make a million bucks, but if you're providing and if you're leading and not leaning, that that's the intrinsic value of being a man. It's not to say that the, the car that you bring, the status you provide, 
But the fact that you can look at your kids, you look at yourself and say, listen, I'm doing right by my family. I'm providing. And that, that's how I felt when I was making 20, 30, 40 grand a year. I felt great now. And the reason why I started making $100,000 a year, or making a million dollars a year, because I realized I want to be in a position to improve the overall quality of life for my family. And I think as a man, we all want that for our family. I don't want to be a set. I don't want to just settle. I want to expand. I want to grow. I want to provide an example for my children to be inspired by, to, to, to follow by. So, but no, it's not just being a provide and protect for men that defines men. There's a large part of it though. A large part of a woman's job is also to nurture. A large part of a woman's job is to, to discern, to help her, her husband and being according to biblical principles, being a helpmate. Different roles, equal, different, but the man at the end of the day is the leader of the home. Everything rises and falls in leadership. That's why we look to men. That's, where, that's, why, that's why society today is overmothered and underfathered, and that's why we have a society we have today. And it's our job is through this podcast, our job through our work as entrepreneurs, our work through personal finance and coaching families is to help usher and lead and challenge and uplift and, and, and set the standard for men. I'd say that. By the way, I wish we had a capacity. Uh, Jordan, down the road, do we have the capacity to take calls? Maybe, maybe down the road we need to take calls. Uh, no. Not yet? Not yet? Okay. Maybe we take calls, we just do it ghetto style. We just uh, put them on yeah. speakerphone. And guys, if you guys are going to shoot me a comment or a message or a comment in my DMs, just put it on the chat. There's, there's no shame to what you have to say. We, yeah, we're, we we're all you, learning from it. Yeah, we engage and, from it. And by the way, I'm not here of any standard saying that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect once. So I'm, not, I'm not the guy. I'm, not, I'm saying I'm the example to follow. All I'm saying is I'm just pursuing this as a way to improve myself. And, and many people out there don't have that basis. They don't know what to follow. They know what to see. They just kind of process it themselves. And they sit in their man cave and say, okay, I'm just going to do my very best. I'm just going to do me. No, I'm saying we are a format. We're a platform of two dudes behind the mic that have been there, done that. I've had my situation in the value that we create through our business, the value we create through our YouTube channel, the value we create through this. A lot of people are starting to pay attention. And we may or may not be your cup of tea. Oh, well, I totally get it. All I know, here's my prayer. I said, Lord... Provide me the people that you, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to serve, but at the same time to remove the people that I'm not. So if, if I rub you wrong, great, but maybe you stick around long enough, provide you all the stuff to troll me about and not like me about. But uh, the other topic I want to talk about here too as well is, is speaking of money, um, is financial literacy. When we, 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 We're going to wrap up with this. Yes, sir. Uh, we wrap up with another topic. Yeah. We'll see if we can squeeze it in. Financial literacy. April is financial literacy month. 57% of adults are financially literate. Uh, the, rank, the U.S. ranking in, America, in the world, 14th in le financial literacy. The amount of adults in America, 33% 30, 30 of adults worldwide are financially literate. That translates to an astonishing $3.5 billion, billion adults who lack financial literacy across the globe. According to the T Institute, adults only answer 48%. A 23 questions correctly in terms of financial literacy. This is a decrease from 50% in 2017. In other words, what I'm translating here in financial literacy month, maybe it's just not financial literacy month. Maybe it's financial literacy lifestyle because finance, career, faith, relationship is so important to not just dedicate one month to it, but also dedicating a whole lifestyle because oftentimes we ask people, how many times do you think about money on a daily basis? But, but, but I'm gonna ask you guys on, on, the, on the podcast, live chat, how often do you think the typical person thinks about finances? Not often, often, or a lot often. I was thinking about money a lot and asked myself a question. If I'm working so hard, how come I have so little to show for? I have so much to owe for. What's your thoughts about financial literacy as it relates to America? Going, to, uh, going based off of your point right now on how much do you think about money? A couple years ago, I used to think about money um, along the lines of like how can I stop losing money and how yeah. can I make more money? Yeah. And every single purchase that I made was a nickel and diming purchase. Yeah. Every single purchase that I made, I had a budget. Yeah. Every single purchase that I made, it was like, okay, I'm about to max on my credit card, but if I move this here and move this here, if I close this every single day, every single week and every single month, it was either pay your bills or eat. Yep. And if you want to pay your bills, then you're having tuna and ramen for the next couple of days. Now I've, you know, by the grace of God, I've, I've, been able, I managed to get to a position where now whenever I swipe my debit card or my credit card, I don't have to think twice about it. And now the only thought that comes in my head is, how much more can I serve people yes, right. to expand and make more money? But now, aside from that, how can I help people that work with me make money? That, that's a power spot to be in. Yeah. That's a power spot to be in because money shouldn't be causing you to create a lot of the missed decisions you have in your life. 
Because yeah. now lack of finance and lack of financial resources or lack of financial literacy is causing us to miss out on opportunities. 38% of adults lost $500 last year due to lack of financial literacy. 15% of adults over, lost over $10,000 last year due to financial literacy, right? Yeah. So that, that's a lot of people losing a lot. Imagine what another 10 grand would do for your savings invest and compound sure. an 8% rate of return over a 20, 30, 40 year period in a tax-free environment. So these are some of the things that, that we need to be thinking about to, 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 to master and to talk about, because a lot of people on social media, they're rich. Yeah. Everybody on social media, they're, 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 everything's going great, but we know the real story. Yeah. There's a highlight reel that people put on social media, and then there's a real story that people have live, live behind closed doors that they don't want to share on social media. Yeah. 